rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could you remain standing just for a moment, please, uh, in uh, reviewing the events this week in Hampton. Uh, there were three families that uh, lost loved ones and uh, those that uh, they lost uh, were great uh, <coughs> local business people. They were great local families. Uh, they built this town. They built this state. They were freedom fighters. They served their country. And uh, I would ask that we uh, share a moment of silence, please, for uh, Shirley L. Palmer, James C. Cropper, and Fred Shockey Sr. Thank you. Please be seated. Welcome to the March 24, 2014 Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting. First item on the agenda is public comment. Anyone care to offer any public comment? Uh -huh. well, you introduce people first. Which way do you introduce people? Yeah, we'll do that after the public comment. Thank you. Uh, Art Moody, 3 Thompson Road. Uh, what, the first thing I just want to, uh, if it comes up tonight or if somebody knows, uh, they, you started a pilot program for trash and recycling pickup in January. It was the last, the end of this week. And I'm wondering, should I put my trash out next week on Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. Still on Wednesday? Still on Thursday? I'll back to Wednesday. <coughs> Second thing, I haven't seen anything written about it. Anyway. Maybe it's been in the paper. I, don't know. Uh, I noticed uh, the Conservation Commission delegation is here uh, on, a, on a community forest. Uh, whatever happened to our votes back in 1987 that delegated the Conservation Commission as to manage the town forests. <coughs> they even got 75,000 that year to, <coughs> to uh, protect and to manage such lands. And I haven't heard any cutting of timber <laughs> since. And they also were to s voted to set up a town forest fund to put any money received from timber, I guess, into uh, that town forest uh, fund. Uh, I know uh, 12 shares is what's on the agenda here. Uh, we already have trails there. Boy Scout, Eagle Scout put it in, Mr. Bashline. <coughs> and we got to be careful about recreation there because Hunting and target shooting is permitted. Mm. Wear orange if you do. Uh, it's also in the aqua protection zone. Uh, the last thing is uh, we heard last week the manager mentioned a, a bill in Concord about the governing bodies of towns, boards of selectmen especially, has to have an agenda two weeks in advance and they can't do anything that's not on the agenda. Well, that's sort of draconian in nature. However, uh, I would like to uh, offer this uh, proposal to the board. Uh, I'm sure that w that's being done to have complete transparency and advance warning to the public of your actions. But there are times when you do take action, you decide things that are not on the agenda. And I would like to propose that should you do want to uh, bring up an item that isn't on the agenda and you are going to decide it, that you open up public comment for one minute comments from the public that's here. Uh, I, I, I can remember a lot of things that were on the agenda <coughs> that I would like to have known about. 
even going back to the 1970s when all of a sudden we got nuclear warning poles, siren poles on town proprietary property because it was brought up off the agenda after midnight when the two <coughs> members of the press had already left because of deadlines. The Hampton Union and Portsmouth Herald were separate in those days and they were very competitive. <coughs> and uh, I wonder if we tax those poles of the nuclear plant. Uh, two are on state land, two are on town land. Maybe three are on town land, but at that time the Route 1 sign for the town maintenance was at Watson Lane. And uh, all of a sudden, a few years later, it was moved up to Browns Bridge. So I don't know whether that pole was put in by the town or the, uh, okayed by the town or the state. Uh, we, I know when we put the sidewalks in in 1996, we had to go around the pole with the sidewalk. Well, that's, that's my suggestion uh, for transparency of this board. A short public comment period during the meeting when those conditions arise. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Richard Rodney, 29 Highland Ave. Uh, if you recall, I was here before this board last week during public comment. I brought to your attention a situation of a safety hazard on Highland Ave. Uh, with the, uh, the fact that the snow banks were reaching out six, seven feet away from the curbs. And since the, the parking ban was lifted, we, we were going to be allowed to park on the street. Uh, in addition to that, that the, uh, the staging and the uh, jersey barriers were about to be placed along the, uh, the side of the, the Ashworth along Highland Ave. And again, it, pr it presented a, a safety hazard. And again, I brought this to, uh, to this board. And I guess uh, what I'd like to say is that sometimes, you know, the squeaky wheel really is effective because <laughs> uh, Friday morning, uh, lo and behold, uh, Public Works came down Highland Ave with a payloader and a couple trucks and removed those snow banks and uh, mitigated that, that safety hazard. So I just want to say that uh, I, I, wanted, I talked to Fred about this and I thanked him for uh, his efforts and I would just publicly like, like to thank whoever was responsible for having that, that taken care of. And it, 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 to me it, it, is a result of, it resulted in a couple, uh, uh, a couple things. <coughs> like I say, coming before this board uh, I, and giving that uh, my concerns, I felt that you know, people listened because sure enough, action was taken. Uh, so the second part of this is that I think that the benefit of uh, public comment is something that should continue. Now, I don't know what the results are of that uh, HB 1591, but from what I've heard, uh, it would be kind of a cumbersome way to conduct meetings. If items are not on the agenda, well, then I would, I would see a, uh, an influx of people uh, getting on the agenda and also making appointments for some minor things that could be taken care of in a snap, in a couple minutes by us appearing here. So I have to agree with Arthur Moody that whatever the outcome of that 1591 is, that you would continue the, uh, what I think is a benefit to the public that allows the public an opportunity to come before this board with their concerns and, and most of the time getting them resolved as long as it's not a very complicated issue. <coughs> but I feel like public comment is an important uh, function of the <coughs> democratic way of way uh, that this town operates and I would like to see, see it continue for whatever way it can be possible. So now I'm going to change my hat a little bit and very briefly as the uh, moderator for the Hampton Beach Village District. Our annual meeting is taking place on this Friday. Uh, registration and voting will take place between 1 and 7 p.m., followed by our annual meeting where we'll 
will be reviewing and voting on the, our annual budget. If you uh, reside in the Hampton Beach Village District, again, it w I would urge you to come and vote for uh, the election of our offices. If you are not registered at the Hampton Beach Village District, even though you may be a registered voter here in town, the uh, supervisors of the checklist will be available from 1 to 7 for you to sign up. Uh, just two requirements, that if you are not on that, the, uh, the, uh, the official list, you will have to pre prevent, present proof of your residency in the district and also a valid ID, a valid picture ID. If you are on the list, again, a valid I picture ID will be necessary to vote. So again, uh, voting from 1 to 7 p.m. and followed by our annual meeting at 7. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So they can register from 1 to 7, too. That's right. You can <coughs> register from 1 to 7 at the, and it'll be held at our new Brown Ave fire station. Yeah, thank you. Any further public comment? And seeing none, and just a slight uh, change of uh, the way we do business, we will start with a uh, uh, in self introduction and we'll work from Jim to Mary Louise to Rusty to Rick and then back to me. Sir, the floor is yours. <coughs> Jim Waddell, happy to be here. Mary Louise Wolsey. Do you have community announcements as well? Yep. No. Okay. Rusty? Yes, Rusty Bridle, and uh, thank you for everybody being here. I have one community announcement is uh, the Hampton Academy Players um, has a production of Murder at the Crooked House or 18 Nervous Gumshoes. Um, <laughs> it is going to be this Thursday, March 27th at 4 o'clock or Friday, March 28th at 7 and Saturday, March 29th at 7. So if you got a chance to see a play put on by the uh, Hampton Academy Players. And I'm Rick Griffin, and I'd like to uh, comment on the chili, uh, what was it? Cook chili cook-off. Cook-off cook -off that they had at the Hampton Academy this last Saturday. Uh, Wally's Pub was the grand winner. And what's the name of that lady that came in second? Uh, Nancy? Nancy York. Nancy York. And it was a fun time. They, Rusty tells me, they made eight or nine hundred dollars, so it was a good thing for the Great eighth graders class trip. It was a good, good community event too. So, and I ate 27 uh, <laughs> bowls of chili. <laughs> <laughs> and it was challenging. Well, I wasn't on the <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was fun, and well, all of it was very interesting to see how people make their chili. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, and uh, welcome aboard to the full board for our first full board meeting. And uh, Mary Louise and I uh, welcome the new members and. Uh, uh, are thankful for everyone's presence tonight. Uh, Roman numeral three appointments, Mike Swotzer, Finance Director, Monthly Financials. Please, sir. Good evening, Mike. Good evening. <coughs> um, I'm here to present the January and the February financial reports and when I compared and looked at January's numbers basically the only real high point of that month was that we had motor vehicles at $235,000 which was 13000 above budget. After that my comments were very very small and very early in the year so since we deal on a year to date basis I'm going to basically deal with the month of February. If there's any questions about January, of course, I'll try and answer. So, now I'm dealing with February, uh, second month of the year. Um, this was done after the town meeting, so therefore the 14, the 2014 budget column now uses what was the default budget, and that was selected by town meeting. From now on, I'm just going to call it the budget. Income came in at 557000 Motor vehicles came in at 146.7, which is definitely lower than the prior month, and is now at $48,000 below the budget for minus 1.8%. I am not worried. You have a lot of issues going on in regards to the weather, the timing, etc. So this, uh, this should come around for us through the year. Other major contributors were interest on taxes 22, 
The state of New Hampshire came in with highway subsidy at 53 and a water pollution grant at 29. Departmentals, 29. Land rent, the bills went out for $170,000. Franchise fees at 56 and the real estate trust at 35. On the expense side, when you take uh, the operating departments without the debt service, but with the open POs, it came in at 18.3%, which is compared to the budget of the, the target of 16.67, or it's higher by $370,000. However, this un unfavorable condition is really explained by the semi-annual payments of the workman's comp um, that came in at 278000 hydrants 246 and then also the annual uh, bank buyback program at 189 The reason why I point these out is that if you're looking at a budget, we're always comparing 112, 112, 112. If you get hit with 12 12s, you're going to be over budget on that line item, and it throws out your calculation. So early in the year, these type of things, which I call the January effect, um, does play havoc. So we're really not overexpended. And I make reference to that in the departmentals also, the January quarterly effect. And one of the perfect examples is my finance repairs and maintenance. Uh, came in at $10,000 and it's for the annual support contract for my financial software. So right there you can see that line is basically 10, 10 twelfths but it won't move very much for the rest of the year because I've booked that large. Audit services are at 24.3, and it's the progress payment dealing with the 2013 uh, audit. The final cost should be in uh, or below the budgeted amount. Personnel administration, as I was talking about earlier, the annual uh, <coughs> bank buyback program hit a new record of $189,000. This is $69,000 overage will probably be offset by the underexpending of employee separation costs. And that was done the same, same way in 20, uh, 30, 30, uh, 2013, the typo. Merit pay was charged with $17,000, which is equal to the non-union pay increases that were granted last year. What I've done is I've charged the merit, the merit account and then thrown credits into each department where their costs will show up, which is police, fire, admin, whatever. Um, because right now, that was where the money was budgeted but the expenses are coming out at the departmental level. Municipal insurance. The annual membership dues to the NHMA, which is $16,000, were paid in January, and that was prior to the delivery of session. You'll note, though, that there is a budget there because we defaulted, and that number does have a budget. In the same section, it should be noted the town pays unemployment compensation claims as incurred versus paying into the state funds. So therefore, if we have people filing unemployment claims, this, that number will run through the year. Um, police uh, is at 13.67 percent overall versus the 16 percent uh, target. There's two accounts of note. Uh, the admin, the <coughs> tuition reimbursements, right now at 69 percent of budget. And I think another payment went through. I believe that account you'll find over or at the budget, uh, the next report. And then also the traffic and <coughs> vehicle reemplacement um, would be fully expended as soon as we get the, the new cars in and the $77,000 PO, which is there, is uh, closed out. Fire department, 15.4%. Three ac uh, accounts of note are the first three in the fire station section. Electric, heating, and then water. The budget that is here was set using the old station which were probably lower than what were needed to run the new station. So I think we're going to have issues in those three accounts during the year. Uh, I, I know the chief is aware of it, and he'll have to make adjustments throughout his budget to account for them. Uh, as referred to earlier, the hydrant to the semi-annual payment, that is over what I expected for the first half. We will go over in that account. Um, I believe there'll probably be some kind of um, increases to the budget or to the expenditures for the hydrant, so that one will go over later on in the year. We'll be coming to you and asking for permission for specific groups to go over, uh, knowing that this is going to be one of them. Highways and streets, it's over target by about 
and this is really primarily due to the snow and ice removal cost that's almost fully expended for the second month of the year. Also an admin overtime, it's running $4,000 ahead of the same time last year or slightly over $10,000. I have looked at the account, I've looked at who's in there, and they're basically tracking. Um, you can see the snow events, and then also there's always some time involved preparing for it, etc. So um, it's legitimate costs that have been put into both of those. Uh, municipal sanitation would be running below target if you didn't, you know, in essence count the $151,000 annual PO for the chemicals. Uh, this is for you, Mary Louise. The 2013 encumbrances are at 28% after two months. We're working on them. We're trying to get them out of there for Bless you. Bless you. Yeah. Uh, cable Committee received the first quarterly payment of its franchise re uh, fee revenue at 18000 I referred to the town portion earlier in the other income. And this is the biggie. EMS. There was a major audit adjustment dealing with the estimated, and I repeat, estimated allowance for uncollectible ambulance bills. The allowance account was increased by $358,000, which had a negative lowering effect on the net fund balance. Now, I have also sent you a specific analysis of that, and I'm picking up on that. Um, that those changes uh, can be seen on the prior year column, which breaks the $358,000 adjustment down to uh, 276 relating to prior years and then $82,000 relating to 2013. Why did this happen? Well, it's because the standard procedure that I've been following for multiple years or since I came here was to set the reserve, which is a negative number, at as the basically against all the receivables at 50 percent. This was the net balance in the uh, accounts receivable therefore was overstated because now that I look at it, now that it's been uh, reviewed, you can see that some very old receivables, I, we're never going to get them. They should be written off. But right now, the reserve that prior to the audit would have only had 50 cents on a dollar sitting there ready so that if you wrote off a dollar, you'd only you'd have to charge 50 cents to the expense account, which in essence is what the change in the reserve did. Um, so to alleviate the problem in the future, <coughs> we've changed instead of doing 50 cents across the board, we've changed it to have the current year at 50 percent, the prior year at 63. So we're increasing more of the reserve the next prior year at 75 and then finally anything over three years is 100 percent reserved. So I just looked at the latest information coming through and we have had increases in the billings. We've also had increases in or decreases uh, due to receipts and basically the reserve comes out the, about the same number that it was two months ago when it started out at the end of December. That raises a different issue. At the end of 2013, the balance in the fund, because this write-off literally hit the fund balance, brought it down to $178,000. That's not enough to support the two ambulances that were on order. And they're on order because when the chief came to the board, we still did not know about this. We only found this out basically mid, mid to late February. So therefore, using in essence, incorrect data, he went and did um, put two ambulances on order. One was on, and we got the second one on order uh, because we got the same price, which is a really good deal. However, <coughs> we can't support the two. The easy solution is to cancel the second uh, ambulance. I wanted to see if there were other ways to do this, and so I went to the DRA and asked really the, the, the question, can we run it negative at the end of the year? Can we run the balance in a revolver into the negative? You can do it during the year, but you need to come basically out to a positive number at the end of the year. And I did talk to DRA today, and this is a quote, you can't spend what you don't have. So um, it's a very succinct answer to the question. We basically can't spend the money on a second ambulance. <coughs> the manager and I have talked it over 
talked it over with the chief, and um, that's the solution to, in essence, what is a problem that we're going to be presenting. That's the financial portion of this in regards to the monthly numbers. I open it up to the board as to do you have questions? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. A couple of thoughts, Mike. Um, on page two of three, the fire department and the electric heating fuel and water, the budget was set using figures from the old stations which were probably lower than what will be needed to run the new stations. Number one, the beach station is brand new. I'm assuming there was some reasonable thought given to energy conservation when that thing was built. Instead of the old leaky building, I would think what do you think, Fred, that we would get a little better result in that? Well, you have to take consideration you have the second, if you have the uptown, which is basically double the size. Right. And we set the budget at a more reasonable rate right. to reflect this. But once again, I'm just going to have to say the word default. These numbers, we didn't set these numbers. These are from the last year's budget, which matched up with the building. And yes, they did do, they made it as green as possible. Mm -hmm. But you actually have larger facilities that are going to be consuming more energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then on the um, whoop, page three. On pages 11 and 12, municipal sanitation would be running below its target if the 151,000 annual purchase order for chemicals was not used in the calculation. I'm not quite sure where you're going with that. Do you mean we literally have purchase orders for 151,000 that have already been filled, we're just waiting to pay them? No. I'm sorry. What I've done is I've changed <coughs> in my, excuse me, in changing my calculations to include not only what has been spent, but also what we all have out for POs, because mm -hmm. in essence you could figure that's spent. So because um, the sanitation group set up an annual one, they will spend 151,000 through the year. This makes it so that they don't have to cut a PO, you know, every week to get chemicals. So this is this is a large number. So because of its being included in the calculations as an open uh, PO, yeah. it's I'm just comparing it to the 16.67. Uh -huh. If you took that down, it would pull it out of the mathematics and it would bring you back on budget. So they're running fine. Okay. It's just the mathematics that's playing havoc with me here. Okay, and then on the bottom on the EMS fund, and you've just explained that very well, but I want to know why we're running into these huge shortfalls. Now, I am recalling that for Hampton residents who do not have insurance, their transport via EMS would be basically forgiven, but we must be transporting an awful lot of, what, um, transients, uh, people at the beach, uh, visitors, guests, and if that if we're having such a high rate of people not paying, the CMS fund is supposed to be self-sustaining. So where where are we running into trouble? Has anyone focused on that yet? Who is not paying? Well, that's what a we're lot of money. What we're finding, yes, it is a lot of we money. We can't afford to run an ambulance service free of charge for people who do not dwell in the community. Right. We, as I said, we used to calculate it at 50%. We know basically that half of the, half of the <coughs> bills that are out there will probably not be fulfilled or, or paid off. And what we're getting is exactly what you talk about, the summer people, okay? I see a lot of addresses on the lettered streets, which tells me immediately that it's either summer rentals or even a winter rentals, that the people take the service and then they disregard the bill and then they basically move away. <coughs> We've also got some that don't have uh, social security numbers, so therefore we can't trace them out that way. And I hate to say this, but some of the people have passed away. So these bills um, have gone stale. The group we deal with send out three bills initial bill plus a couple more, then they send out collection letters. Mm -hmm. But if people are not responding to that, mm -hmm. then basically we, we need to write it off. We expect to write off half, half of the bills, the current bills. 
what's happened was through not realizing the impact, we allowed the bills, the old bills, to stay out there. We should have been reserving more and more as we are now, saying that something that's over three years old, we'll never get. So therefore, <coughs> we should write that off. But how can we head this off? I'm looking to Fred. How, is, how you know, we can't break the backs of the public by transporting huge numbers of people from out of town and many out of state who aren't paid. But a lot of the people that are from out of state and out of town do pay. So Well, still, you're looking at a lot. I mean, that's a lot of money. Yes, ma'am. But it's also, as I said, goes back a long time, and I take a lot of the responsibility in regards to not having kept up with this. Well, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that so much as I am going forward. We still generate... It's the posture we take mm -hmm. on leveling out and, and collecting as much for the services off the back of our fire department that we possibly can. This, this EMS fund will continue to generate sufficient funds to fund the ambulance. It was the timing on all of this in regards to what we did that is causing the issue. We will generate between sixty and seventy-five thousand dollars a year between what we bill, mm -hmm. what we collect, and what it costs us to run it. So therefore, this is self-sufficient. It's just that we couldn't back to back two one hundred seventy-five thousand dollar ambulances. But there's a fairness issue here. So the pe individuals from out of town who are being transported and using the service are paying, and others are getting away with not paying and it's all coming back to rest on us on the taxpayer I'm just wondering if there's a workaround this this has not affected the taxpayer this is still inside the EMS fund <coughs> these are these are dollars generated by bills well if 50 percent of the bills aren't being paid then it's certainly having an impact on the taxpayers and it's having an impact on the ability of the fire department to run that fund successfully. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a workaround legally or not. I don't know if there's a way we can address that, but I'm appalled to have such a large number of defaults from Use people who are using our service. Company. We do. Yeah. We do. The problem is that these people are defaulting or out of state, which means you have to go to their state to sue them. And that's more costly than just writing the writing off the cost. Yeah. And if they turn to be um, if they turn to be in, indigent as far as the, their their reserves are concerned, mm -hmm. the court will just simply throw the bill out the window anyhow. So, but it, in, in many of these cases, these folks are some of them are from Canada, some of them are from other states in the United States, some of them are overseas. Right. Uh, the idea is you'd have to hire a lawyer in each one of those states mm -hmm. to sue them which would be more than the bill. The last time I looked at the list, because we have looked at it, there there were many people that were passed away. Oh, yeah, there were quite a Things number. like that. I don't think the list is totally... Um, it has to be a, a difficult situation, right? Because you can't refuse to... You can't no. tell somebody you got to pay before I'll take you. No. And the price that people do pay is fairly high, yeah, too. Yeah. So I don't know if there's something built into that. It's, it's, it's basically... The bill is sufficient to, it's aimed at the Medicare, mm -hmm. Medicaid rate. The chief just adjusted it last year. Correct. So that if they have the insurance, that's really where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I just, I had to ask because yep. I... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I will say that when I, I've seen many cases of people using the ambulance service, sometimes an old person walking down the road, and they're so nice to them, and uh, I'm sure many people do make an effort to pay because they're so uh, grateful for the treatment that they've got, that they get. And, and a lot of people do have insurance, but a lot of people don't. Yeah. So, like will say, did you have any other questions or comments? Um, give me one second to just fish through the end of the... Do you want oh. to come back to you? You good? Um, wastewater treatment. Okay, so the chemicals, 151, 479 here, you've got all open PO. So that's what you're saying. You have the lump to draw down on. Right. Okay. And they were that's a bit. <coughs> they were a bit out. Yes. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mike. Selection Griffin, any questions? 
Um, no, except I agree. If you don't have the money, you can't spend it. <laughs> no. The only I, I, I saw on there, Mike, is with the uh, with the two buildings, the two new buildings. Yeah. Don't we now have two sprinkler systems, which we have to pay extra for that water, mm -hmm. that pipe, for that feed? That's correct. That's, that's so. That's something we never had in our buildings yeah. before. Yeah. We now have to pay for that six-inch right. main that comes into each one of the buildings. We did go to each of the utility companies, each of the providers, and they did give us an estimate of the cost for this year for the new buildings. Yeah. <coughs> Unfortunately, because the budget defaulted, we have last year's cost for the old buildings in place of it. So right. we're going to run over those sums. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, a that's one of the reasons why we never had we never had to have those sprinkler yeah. systems in the buildings before, and now we do. Yeah. That was it. Okay. okay. So what do? Mike, thanks for the report. It's really good. And uh, overall, I'm just in general, we're not in bad shape right now. No. So we're going forward. Things are looking decent. I think, yeah. We're, we have last year's budget basically to work with. The managers are aware of this. This is what they do. They will control the costs and allocate the money to the correct places, and we will continue through. We're, we're still very early on, and some of these mathematics is, are playing havoc, but um, no. I think we're fine. We'll continue. We'll continue to to do business. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Director. One, yes, ma'am. One quick one. I'm sorry, but I I had one <coughs> other thought, and I'm going to be addressing some of this a little later on. On page 12 of the operating budget summary by expense, that one. Um, I was I flagged the waste tipping fees and the waste hauling. Because last week I passed out to you gentlemen the calculations from Chris Jacobs and Mark Richardson as, uh, from a discussion that we had last fall regarding the disposal of furniture. And I remember Chairman Bean uh, addressed uh, increasing the fees for individuals bringing sofas and so forth. Um, the bulky furniture um, costs a tremendous amount. It's heavy. It, it's bulky. It has a tremendous amount of uh, costs us a tremendous amount of weight and to bring up to turnkey and I would like to have on the agenda for us for next week uh, after you've had a thorough chance to review those figures to ask when uh, Director no uh, Noyes is here if we can start aggressively pursuing the extra <coughs> roll off for furniture to be transported to Eco Maine to save us weight for tipping and also to get that huge bulk out of what we're transporting. So it should lessen the weight and it should lessen the our use of the turnkey facility. So I noticed when you had that, uh, you have that marked uh, on page 12, uh, 550,000 potentially for waste tipping fees and 153,000 for hauling. I'd like to see us fine tune a little bit here and get that that segment of the waste out of the actual turnkey stream. That's it. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Can I bring up one other thing? <coughs> I did prepare uh, for the board back in March 17th an analysis of the uh, my projection of the property tax rate. Yep. Um, you will see next week on the consent agenda the MS2, which is the state um, mm -hmm. form, which is the appropriations actually voted at town meeting. And when you get that, you will find that the two the report I sent you and that one will dovetail in regards to the expenses. Sure. Uh, but it, was there any questions in regards to the tax rate or you all set on that? Well. Any questions? Well, actually, well, let me say an observation. Um, Fred last week mentioned that he may be coming to us uh, in the fall at the time of tax rate setting asking us to surrender a million dollars to offset the tax rate and I think we're going to have to start taking steps now as a board to see if we can ameliorate some of the problems looking ahead to that because I that's not something that I would be happy to have to do but if we can uh, <coughs> mitigate that a little bit I think we need to try uh, if I could just point out one thing that um, when the 27 million dollars of expenditures were approved at town meeting. Mm -hmm. That's the number that will be used to set the tax rate. It has got you can you could you could literally spend zero 
yeah. and your tax rate will be set on the $27 million. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you're talking about the mitigation, right, um, right now with the, with the tight budget, yeah. really you're going you're gonna to be spending close to the complete budget, but the tax rate would not be affected by anything you saved except for if you want to take money down from the fund balance. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Okay. That's good. So that, that $27 million is, is the budget plus the Warren articles yeah. that passed? Yeah. yeah. And that, uh, on, on that, number is a, that number literally is almost set in stone. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's what the MS2 will go up to the state saying, this yeah. is what we've actually approved for, for <laughs> our expenditure. What we expend on it has nothing to do with the tax rate. <coughs> that's where the number comes from. We're recommending that you take a look at it in the fall yep. because the only way you can affect the size of the tax rate is to obtain more revenues. Yes. That million dollars is termed as a revenue because mm -hmm. you're transferring it from surplus into the revenue base. <coughs> we try to enhance the revenues that, are, that come in through in the individual departments every year. We're always looking for more money. So um, hopefully we'll be able to find a little uh, and, and be able to you know, bring that down just a little bit. but. It's, it's, it's tough. It requires a tremendous amount of money to bring that, mm -hmm. that back down to where it was. Mm -hmm. But we'll try. We do every year. Director, thank you. And uh, my <coughs> comments on the uh, um, amounts in the tax rate is that's not set by the selectmen. It's not set by you. Right. It's set what the voters, voters. vote for. And this exactly is their correct. town. And this is, this is the vote. We need to, to get out there. Exactly, yeah. sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Continuing with appointments, number two, Brian McCain, Channel 22. Mr. McCain will speak about an updated estimate from Comcast for the cable drop in equipment, access for the AV quote for the control room reconfiguration in new equipment install, the chase cam for SAU 90, and finally, live streaming. Sir, the floor is yours. Okay, the first thing is the Comcast. It, this is, we talked about this a uh, couple months ago. And you approved 17,000 for the new equipment and cable drop. Well, now we've got something off paper. And granted, it's still just an estimate. They don't give out quotes. Uh, it is up to 20, 20,548.50. So that's just, I want to let you know if it did go up. I don't know whether you have to approve that new amount or do we just continue on. I mean, it's still in the works. They're, they're going to they're gonna probably wait till it's warmer before they do anything anyway. Sure. So that's the first thing. That's for the that's for the second channel, channel 13, to be independent. Run over to the fire station. Wonderful. Now, I don't know if I should. Uh, we should get that approved. So it was the 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 added three thousand dollars. Questions, Selectman Wilson. Brian, what's a chase cam? I mean, is that literally <coughs> something you run around and? No, no, no. That's that's something for the. Uh, yeah, that's that's. That's that you're in chase after me. With no, no. It's it's a, it's a it's a recording device. And what it is is it can record up to eight hours. Uh, oh. And um, the reason for that that's for the that's for the SAU 90 John Justin. So he can record his meetings when they do these school boards. They can run three, four hours. Uh, uh, he doesn't have to stop. He can just uh, just hook this up and records to it. And it's easier to convert to what we need him to give mm -hmm. us. So we don't have. We were having freezing issues. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that, but sometimes the school board and some of his uh, his uh, shows he produces would stop and freeze, yeah. and that's because of the format he was giving it to us. So this will put it in the correct format, and also give him a backup. I use it for everything from the deliberative session to anything I do outside, uh, because it's a backup. It's an external hard drive. It's an external hard drive. It's like the pig vault we have in here. In case something <coughs> would happen to uh, the Nexus, this would have it on this. We wouldn't lose the meeting. It would be the same for him. I admit to being technologically challenged, but <laughs> I'm impressed and I'm happy to support you. All set. All set. Okay, so the other items, if you want to just. Uh, Rick, did you have anything before you? No. Okay, uh, the thank cheese you. Can, anything else on the cheese yeah. cans? If you can skip to that, okay. Okay, the access AV is to have them send a couple texts down. And reconfigure. We're going to buy that. We have that new equipment that was approved the last time. 
and uh, we have to remove a lot of old equipment, and there's a lot of cables, a lot of wires, and honestly, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't think I, I could possibly do it, but I, we could also be off the air for a week, so I don't <laughs> think it's a good idea. So this is a high estimate. I told them to go ahead for two days, but I think we can do it in a day because I'm going to be here and help and do all that we're going to, and Paul's going to help, and we're going to do all the moving ourselves and have it, basically they're just going to run wires. We're going to take everything out, and they're going to put the new stuff in, and uh, run and connect. We have manpower to do all we the have manual man, we have labor. The, yeah, we have the cheap manpower. They can tell us what needs to be done. And, we'll and I did call them and uh, and ask them, if it's only a day, we only start the day, and they confirmed us that it will only be a day. So this is for two full days. Wow. And also cables and connectors, if necessary, which I don't believe so, because we have plenty here. So I just wanted to see if... Uh, and get that approved so we can move on and get the Good. equipment put in. Mr. Chairman, do you want a lump sum motion or do you want to move on them individually? Uh, I am out of my league on this and uh, <laughs> on, yeah. the, on the tech side and if I could get some help from uh, yeah. Mr. Well, McCain or for, from here. Mr. Well, Welch, that would be great, or other board members? The, uh, well, we'll talk about the final, which, which is the live stream. This we're just bringing up to the board. It doesn't have to be approved. We just want to bring it up uh, and Paul's going to talk about that. Um, we have quite a few people in town who don't have access to Comcast. Uh, they do have internet. Um, what we're, I'm, we're proposing is that we start streaming 22 on the internet. And it would be a one to one to, one to many. In other words, we take our stream, we run it to the upstream provider who shares it out to everybody so it doesn't kill our bandwidth. That way we steady one stream. He serves as many people as they want as they come in. So people who are, don't have TV or, or don't have Comcast go to a satellite dish or like me that don't have satellite or cable would be able to sit here and view meetings wow. as they're happening. Mm. It's a great idea. I know the State House does it. Well, how, how well did, will that work? Because I, I know sometimes the State House there is freezes all the time. Well, we would, be, with, with we would be using an outside provider for this, and it was going to cost us about $3,800 a year. The first year will be uh, $5,266. And this is all this company does, is provide streaming and hosting for stream. That's the same company that actually hosts our videos, our pre-recorded videos online. Which do, they don't. They do well. The Peg Central. You yes. Know, yeah. They, if you ever watch that, they rarely freeze or anything. Uh, Exeter, town of Exeter has that. Uh, a couple other towns I was wa looking. And I watched them, and they didn't seem to freeze. I don't know who they're carrying, but I think they're also Nexus. But I'd have to check deep into that. Well, Exeter is a Nexus town. They are? Yeah. Well, they're, 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 their feed was, uh, was fine. It's just a thought. I mean, I, you know, it, there is a, you know, a lot of people have the dish and have uh, direct TV and don't have cable. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. So We've actually had people ask us for the past couple of years. And they can do it, watch it in Florida for all the snow. Yeah, that's that's the, yeah you so I was getting ready tonight to come here and someone stopped over to deliver something to me and they saw that I was getting ready and they said, oh, I would, they asked me if we did live streaming because they would mm -hmm. like to watch it. Yeah. From yeah. It is, it is very popular. Yeah, it is very popular, and we're kind of... It's a wave of the future. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. It really is. A lot of people wave that we put out after all. Who knows yeah, with no. Comcast, so... Everybody, Everybody hates Comcast. Yeah. You want to be streaming the school board also, eventually? No, that would be up to the school board. Okay. That would be a service they'd have to pay for. Yeah. I personally think they should be, because if they're going to put on things that parents need to watch, <coughs> uh, they should be streaming because the same reason. Not everybody has cable. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they can also watch it on Peg Central. You guys can bring that up to them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to vote. I'm just not sure what I'm voting for yet. Thank you. Well, I don't know how you would. On the uh, Comcast updated estimate, that's just. You've already approved the 17. I just wanted to bring it up that now it's up to 20, so there's just so okay. everybody knows. Yeah. So I guess it would be the additional $3,000 for just the updated estimate. And then access AV for 19, 1935 and uh, and then the chase camp for SAU 90 for 998 
and then if you would like to do the streaming, I didn't know if there was something you wanted to look into or decide tonight. We should. That would be. Should. Yeah. It's five thousand two hundred and sixty-six dollars. Okay. And then that's uh, partial. That's uh, a lot of that is equipment, up, our yeah. the starting equipment. Then it goes down to a, m a yearly fee. So Fred, does this need to be multiple? Um, uh, Motions. motions or do all one motion okay well so do you have it added up no, I should have. mr. McCain while you're talking I'm, I'm looking at this and, and I'm probably reading it the wrong way but it says that the uh, date the final estimate was completed I'm looking at this peg I yeah. it says that that was September 4th of 2012 is that accurate because that seems to be a little antiquated the which one? Oh, for the Comcast. That's yeah. when they did the site survey. Oh uh, yeah. We just got this a few weeks ago. This from has been them. an ongoing, ongoing. So your 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 twenty is still good, <coughs> regardless. Yes. Of, okay. Yes. I mean, I don't. They took the work order in. Yeah, that's when they probably took the work. I didn't even notice that, but no, this has been going on forever. We just it's just this took a long time to get mm -hmm. on paper. Mm -hmm. This latest number, I believe, is, is just less, less than two weeks old. Yeah, it's about two two three weeks we got this. Okay. Understand why they, that must have been we originally asked them to do it. So I will move to authorize for the cable committee a an amount for technology up to five thousand two hundred and sixty six dollars for the streaming and for the streaming. It's just for the that's well, just for the streaming. Incorporates all this. No, it's twenty thousand. Well, I'm trying to figure out what we're. Yeah, no, that's what he's that he's adding. Okay. Yeah. You got the 1935. I'm going to hold that. The 5266. Yeah. And the cam, which is 998. So that's streaming for the town, Paul, right? That's <coughs> for the town. For this calendar year? Well, if I start working on this, it'll start rolling pretty quick. Okay. But you're saying 12 months is that? Is that going over into, say, March of next year? That's going year? for 12 consecutive so months. So we'll go 12 months yeah. at a time, not calendar year. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so that's All right, so what I've got, um, without the Comcast, because that's, well, I'll put that in there, too. 3,000. 3,000. <laughs> that's just kind of, an, again, an estimate. They, they don't give out quotes, so. Yeah. Yeah, not to exceed. Yeah, it'd be. Uh, <laughs> I should have had this. I was. I was pretty prepared, but not for that. Uh, so the total would be eleven thousand one hundred eighty-nine dollars and uh, fifty cents. Okay, why don't I round that to eleven thousand one hundred ninety dollars mm -hmm. uh, to be authorized to expend that up to that amount out of the cable fund? For purposes of technology and live streaming for the town. I'll suck it out. And motions made by Selectman Woolsey. It is seconded by Mr. Bridal. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Great job. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. You're gentlemen. very brave. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing with appointments number three, Jay Diener, Chair of the Conservation Commission. He's speaking on establishing a community forest in the area of 12 share off White's Lane. Good evening. Good evening. With your permission, I have Pete Tilton with me this evening. Pete is the former chair of the Conservation Commission, and we're currently lucky to have him serving as our vice chair. And Pete probably knows as much about 12 share as anybody I know in, in the town of Hampton. Um, Thank you, Mr. Moody, for providing some background in the introduction for this this evening. I appreciate it. Um, in our town master plan, as I've noted in, in this memo that I sent to you folks, um, there is a recommendation that we develop a management plan for a town forest at 12 share. Um, and for those who are not familiar with 12 share, it's an area roughly bordered by White's Lane off Mill Road, by Barber Lane accessed. Barber Road access through Jaunty's Lane um, down to Muncie Drive and Woodland Road and then on the north uh, bordered by the Northampton border. Yeah. 
So it's a pretty significant area, a lot of which is town-owned land, some of which is privately owned land, and it's, and it's sort of piecemealed in there. Um, so we, and, and that, as I said, has been designated in the town's <coughs> master plan to be the town forest, but that's never really been formalized, and we'd like to start the process of formalizing that. And what I'd like to do is, rather than have it be managed by any one particular town group, such as the Conservation Commission or any other group, let the Conservation Commission take overall responsibility for it, but set up a citizens committee um, to take responsibility for making recommendations and for managing the town forest. I think it's important to have the residents of the town of Hampton involved in, in some of what we do for the town. Um, there are a lot of residents who use our town properties, who use Ice Pond for ice skating and for other recreational purposes, who use the conservation easements that we have at the Batchelder Farm and off Drakeside Road for a variety of recreational purposes. And we see that happening at 12 Share as well. Um, we'd like to have this committee uh, of roughly 12, 10 to 15 people um, be involved in um, creating a map of the area, uh, including the boundaries, natural features such as ponds and streams, um, and the creative features. Uh, right now, people have a rough idea of what's in there, but nobody has a firm idea, so I think mapping would be a first priority. Um, we want to develop an improvement plan, which may involve uh, trail expansion, even just basic trail marking. Um, there are trails back there, but again, they're not marked well, and we want to make sure that in some areas where there are sensitive environmental issues that people stay on the trails. Um, we might want to look at additional plantings, some forest plantings, maybe some pond side plantings, some signage, which would be both boundary signage, um, so people don't go where they shouldn't be going, uh, as well as educational signage, and perhaps the installation of some other features, such as benches and trash cans, um, that um, are low maintenance, um, but that might be helpful for, pe for people who are using the area. Um, we want to, we would like to expand the Conservation Commission's website, if not another web page, devoted to the town forest to provide <coughs> information for people so they can learn more about it from a historical perspective as well as from an access and activity perspective. Um, and also develop a management plan that will include everything from monitoring and maintenance, um, uh, put together a roster for who's responsible for what, and, and implement a reporting system so that we all have an idea of what's being done and, and can ensure that maintenance is being done on a regular basis. Pete can tell you that uh, there are a lot of people who use 12 share and use it for a variety of activities. Um. Of course, all the historical uses, you know, the landowners go up there and cut wood. Um, people like myself have been hunting out there since there was black powder muskets, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, this, <coughs> this, there's always been a few people walking their pets or just out there enjoying a little perambulation and very, very low, low key. Unfortunately, over the last couple of years, I've noticed a lot of unauthorized yeah. trail making going on yeah. out there. And it's, it's stuff that wouldn't, it isn't best management practices. It's it's harmful to wildlife as far as disturbing. I mean, you know, it's one thing for somebody to walk through with a dog or, or a couple mm -hmm. of guys to sneak along hunting and not make much noise. But when you get four or five people out there banging off of trees and rocks with bicycles and mm -hmm. making yeah. their version of BMX tracks out there. And the thing is, a lot of them don't even know they're not on town land half the time. I mean, mm -hmm. so much of it is on private property too, and mm -hmm. the private landowners would be aghast if they knew what's going on up there. And we're not giving permission for, the, for some of the trail making that's going on up there. Mm -hmm. We've got to keep it controlled. I mean, and, I mean, there's enough places to go and rec recreate loud and noisy, but this is a, one of the few small areas <coughs> of town for animals and people to be yes. in more of a natural environment. So. Go out there, take a look around, but don't scare anything out of the way while you're out there. Yes, ma'am. It, it's it's twelve shares, Jay. It's it's plural. Twelve shares. Yeah. We'll help him. Yeah. We'll help him. I know we've got. I know I'm new in town. And Arthur, um, and Arthur was right. Actually, he jogged my memory. I think in the late '80s, there was a concurrent warrant article when we were purchasing the Perkins property to. Uh -huh. Uh, that if there was uh, income derived from the town forests, right. and that would stay in the management of the town forests. But since we've never established a town forest, 
mm-hmm. or derived any income. It's, got, it's been a moot point up to now. But. Enforcement is a problem in there, especially as Peter has pointed out. Uh, over the years, and it's been cleaned up somewhat, but over the years um, before we blocked it off, and I can't remember, Jaunty's Lane and that area, and barricaded that area, old cars, trash, dreadful messes Good in there. Back there. And it's one of the last really great forested areas in town. Bear Path has encroached on that land, and uh, Sherburn has encroached on that land, and that's really sad. Uh, I would like to see you consider some. I talked to, to the chief about this a little while ago because there have been problems with young people in there with the trails and, and really making messes. Uh, I'd like to see some type of provisions for uh, legal uh, well, enforcement <coughs> of that as a town forest. And there are so few places for animals to go now. It's kind of a shame that that can't be largely conserved as a habitat uh, when you have uh, coyotes running through looking for game and starving deer coming into people's yards because they're not able to survive in the habitat that's left for them. I strongly support what you're trying to do. I like to see a little fine tuning especially in enforcement provisions and laying out and signage. Uh, so I think you're, you're on the right track. Uh, that's an area that's very dear to me as a, as a neighbor and uh, one of the last places certainly in the east half of the town that, that's left for us to, uh, to enjoy and just to be happy knowing that it's there. So I thank both of you very much for initiating this. It does, it does have to be kind of codified is, is what you're looking for, I think, because it's one thing for me to say, hey, you shouldn't be doing that mm-hmm. here. And somebody will say, mm-hmm. why not? I'm like, because you shouldn't be doing it here. <laughs> <laughs> and in hunting season, gentlemen, and I always said, yeah, and they do hunt in there, and I know because mm-hmm. I hear boom, boom, but people should not be allowed in that area during whatever the hunting season is, and I'm not sure what that is. You know better than I do, but you shouldn't have people wandering around in there when there's actually hunting going on. It's it's quite all it's quite all right as long as they're they're dressed for it. You know, as long as, well, they're, as, long as they're not dressed as animals. Yeah. <laughs> That's just education. Too. It is. Right. So Absolutely. Many, so many people you see out there with a brown coat or a white hat on. You know, like, mm-hmm. I, I just have some questions on uh, town forest town. When you're talking about that, you're talking about trails and everything like that. What kind of a multi? How do you come up with what multiple use can be done in there? Yeah. You know, I know, like, you know, in national forests, some like that you can mountain bike, you can do various, yeah. you know, cross country ski, you can do various things. So, how do you, uh, you know, come up with with the code or with with the specifications of what can and can't be done in there? I think uh, part of it will be working out with that committee. I mean, trying to find out what yeah. what can be done. I mean, there's room for everybody out there as long as they, as long as they respect. Respect is the word. In gen- that's absolutely true. Uh, people need to respect the property. In, in general, on town-owned properties and where we have conservation easements in place, what we permit are what we call passive recreation. Mm-hmm. Hiking, birding, snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, biking, as long as you're not abusing the property, hunting. Um, we generally do not permit motorized vehicles. Yes. Um, but again, we would work through the committee and, and come up with something that makes sense. Right. And but those would be the general guidelines that we would, would be following. I mean, you talk about signage, but I'd hope there'd be minimal signage. Oh yeah, the, the, the signage, forest, the signage needs signage to be at the, at the, the, at the <coughs> entrance <coughs> places, where so yeah, the yeah, are yeah, there. Yeah. And the trouble is now, people say, "Well, mark the trails." I don't know where all the boundaries are out there. This, it's going to take some investment to find the boundaries uh, and and actually mark them like they do in the state forest with red paint or something like right. that. Somebody's already been out there marking up motorcycle trails with red paint. So yes. Maybe we're going to find a different color. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So let me go ahead. I thought you said you couldn't have motorized vehicles. Yeah, there. we shouldn't. Uh, we, right now, I believe motorized vehicles are not permitted. But they're out there doing and we them. And we wouldn't permit them. But so please commented on that. In the well, past. enforcement is very difficult because by the time you report somebody to the police yeah. and they can get up there, they're long gone. Yes. We've spoken to Fish and Game about patrolling the area, and they just don't have the manpower to there be was, able to do it. It was actually a small effort two or three years ago when Josiah was in town. He did get, get a couple of guys out there and give them a good talking to. Because mm-hmm. you're not supposed to be riding an ATV on private property right. without the landowner permission. Right, right. Sir? No, I think it's a great idea. I think it's something we ought to look forward to and, and, and work with the committee and see about uh, 
how we move forward with this. Wonderful. And I, I will say for those that have questions about 12 shares, mm -hmm. plural, uh, in 2002, Austin W. Bashline, an Eagle Scout candidate mm -hmm. uh, in concert with the Hampton Conservation Commission, has an excellent map, trail system, and uh, history on the uh, public library website. So right. Unfortunately, most of it's gone from bittersweet. It's all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Time marches on. Mr. Welch, any comments? Just that we need to, uh, if you're actually going to do this, we need to eventually have a town forest warrant article. Right. Yeah. The statute requires us to have a committee of three or five members if we're mm -hmm. going to do that. Three, three to five, no more than five? That's what the statute provides for. Okay. That's for the actual town forest committee. That doesn't mean we can have an those, advisory those are committee. the appointed officials <coughs> in charge. That doesn't mean you can't have a committee of 300 people working on it. Mm. I'd rather not. Well, <laughs> yeah. whatever you, you need. That. Sure. Point well taken. Do we need a motion, Mr. Chairman, or what are we, or just welcome them and... Uh, Start working on it actually tonight. Yeah, I, I don't know that a motion is, is required, but we certainly welcome your support and, and any questions and any concerns that you have about going forth with this effort. Put me down to help you. Consider it done. I believe you have a consensus, and barring any further mm -hmm. comment, we look forward to hearing more about mm -hmm. it. And so Thank you, you very Thank much. you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Roman 4, approval of minutes. Number one, March 10th, 2014. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second, you and I were the only ones in mm -hmm. attendance, and we are in favor. Unanimous. Number two, March 10th, 2014, non public session. So move. Second, all those in favor? <coughs> and there were three abstentions for those that were not in attendance on those priors. Tower manager's report. Mm -hmm. Sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, I'm very pleased to report that at uh, 2.27 p.m. on Tuesday, March 18th, <laughs> I was notified the Church Street Pumping Station is in operation. The other station has been completely uh, devoid of electrical services, so nothing's going to happen over there at all. Uh, they are in the process of, uh, I signed the demolition permit today, so wow. we're, we're going down through the utilities to get that done, and uh, hopefully they'll start work on that shortly. But that station is up, <coughs> it is running, it is operational, and uh, we are doing our darndest to keep it that way. So it's a, it's a learning experience because it's a brand new facility. Uh, I want to remind people that we, you need to license your dog by April 30th. Uh, time's running. Um, I want you to avoid those fines and extra penalties that you don't need to have. And exemptions for cre and credits for property taxes for veterans, elderly, blind, disabled, must be filled out on April 15th, 2014. Please call the assessing office uh, for the necessary forms and requirements. If you need assistance in working your way through the forms, <coughs> they're more than willing to help. It's very important you get that done as quickly as possible. Uh, with the annual no parking ban on the street is expired on, on the 15th, uh, please be careful where you park because of the snow banks. We had the one removed on um, Highland, but uh, there are others around town. Uh, some streets are narrow due to the due to the uh, snow windrows, and we'd like to be sure that the police, fire, and ambulance equipment can safely pass in, in emergencies. It looks as if the weatherman is going to be uncooperative, even though we're, we're in spring, and <laughs> may give us some um, some snow uh, in the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, so. You may please pay attention when the emergency parking ban may be back in effect depending on what we get. Uh, although we do need a little maintenance snow to make the, the black stuff look nice, but uh, we'd like to see it go over this weekend. So, And I understand we will have warm weather. Um, I am, uh, with your permission, uh, going to organize a spring auction for unwanted and surplus materials. The Departments are being requested to formulate a list for your approval later on. And the final item is that the um, Department of Public Works has completed their action and the emergency action plan for the Old Mill Pond Dam is completed oh, and is filed with the state of New Hampshire. Good. So we are legal. Excellent. We have met the requirements of the state before the deadlines. Excellent. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Wonderful. Questions for the town manager? Yes, ma'am. Um, for Mr. Moody's benefit, uh, Wednesday is the new... Uh, we're reverting to the old, and well, I assume schedule. it's everybody in the, the neighborhood. We're reverting to the old uh, pickup day. Um, the, J the Joint Operation Plan Draft, Fred, I read it. 
I have highlighted a few things here, and I'm not going to bore everybody. I think I'll just give it to you, and if you have questions, let me know. Sure. But I saw a few areas in the delightful plan that I have questions on. Thank you. Um, the spring list for the auction of unwanted and surplus materials, is that going to include any of the old public works vehicles like pickup trucks that are rotting and falling apart? Uh, I've asked, I haven't asked the departments, I've, I'm informing you before so I asked the think? departments, but yes, the intention is to get rid of everything we don't need. We're encouraging. Right. <coughs> A list you. will be formulated and sent to the board for approval because the ordinance requires your approval right. for the auction items. Right. And uh, do we have a figure on the, uh, I know you have the figure finalized for the sweeper for the discount that we got. And but the two uh, other, uh, for the old, the old pieces that are being uh, replaced? No, as of yet. We right. don't have those. We, we will have those probably within the next couple of weeks. Okay, so we'll know what kind of uh, discount we're getting. Yes, ma'am. Due to the trade-ins. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the town manager? Seeing none, Roman 6, Old Business, number one, question of meeting with residents from areas where trash collections is to be stopped because of restrictions in docks and on plans. Mr. Welch, could you give us a brief synopsis? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the board has uh, been discussing this now for some time, mm -hmm. and there are various areas of the town. There's uh, Ice House, Rubens Lane. Uh, we have uh, an area over off of Acadia. Uh, all these areas uh, we've discovered have uh, stipulations within their condo documents that they are to provide their own trash collection mm -hmm. as opposed to the town collecting. Uh, and we are collecting, or we have been collecting. I believe that uh, Ice House and Rubens Lane have been notified that uh, they are supposed to be taking care of their own. And the last understanding was that the people in Ice House are still bringing their material out to Esker Road and leaving it there for pickup. Um, it's a board question. Uh, you folks, uh, the prior board had ordered me to, uh, to have Public Works give them notice that we would s stop that collection effort uh, because their condo documents require them to do it, uh, as well as plowing their roads because they are private condo roads uh, and making repairs to them. So. That's still on the table, um, and we we did issue. <coughs> excuse me, we did issue, did issue the orders to those condominium properties. There's one we have not issued to, which is Arcadia, uh, our condo project off of Arcadia, and we want to know where the board stands. What do you want to do? Selectman Wilson. Uh, first of all, I was appalled when I came back on the board last year, and Fred. Uh, has been scratching through records trying to figure out which boards, which streets are actually private streets and private ways. I didn't realize that we had such a, a mishmash here. Um, I think there's a huge issue of fairness here because if we say, and I certainly hold with it, that we will not allow public pickup on private roads, that we need to stick to that concept. We can't be wiggling around and doing for one and not doing for the other. Is there any way, Fred, for us to direct, let's see, is there any way for us to guarantee that the planning board stipulations for developments, new roads, et cetera, have to have those stipulations incorporated in the deeds? I mean, so many people have said, oh, I didn't know I was buying on a private road. <coughs> That's outrageous, and it, it's, I, I, feel for people who buy property unaware and then have problems, but I don't see any reason why there shouldn't be full disclosure so that when people buy a house on a lot on a private road that they don't have any clear understanding of what's going on. Is there any way to work with the planning board on that to have them put stipulations that can be carried forward to a deed? I don't believe we have statutory authority to do that. That's too bad. It's in the statute. The legislature's passed statutes that regulate how deeds are formulated mm. and how they're prepared and issued. Mm. Uh, if you buy a condominium, you receive a copy of the condominium documents. Right. I know when I bought my condominium, I also requested a complete set of plans <coughs> yeah. because there's all kinds of notations and other things upon those mm. plans. You don't know what they are unless you read them and look at them. Yeah. Um, 
unfortunately they're not normally provided mm. and people don't know to ask for them right. uh, but the, the condo docks are provided when you buy a condominium and I would say that probably 50% of the people read them and 50% of them don't mm. because I know that uh, in the condo documents in these particular cases and the plans in these particular cases it's very specific that they provide certain things mm. uh, and they're required to do that. The planning board makes sure they go on the documents that the planning board controls mm -hmm. but the documents such as the deeds which are controlled by the legal profession and Does it translate? Uh, they're, they're set by statute and so forth mm -hmm. uh, that material isn't necessarily there. Mm. I just think it's sad for people who are put in a position like this, and I feel for them, but in, on the other hand, it's our duty to protect the town from liability, <coughs> from exposures via liability. And if we have uh, public vehicles getting into trouble on these private roads, uh, it's not going to help any of us out. Uh, in conjunction with this, I think that at least for our next meeting, I'm going to ask to be put on the agenda. Uh, I a, uh, a question for us as a board as to what directives we plan on giving to the planning board. They have clearly asked for directions on, say, removal of waste. And that's in our purview because we do control the waste. And I think we need, before much further time elapses, uh, we need to tell the planning board quite clearly what the situations will be where we will or will not collect waste and or recycling in whatever developments uh, and builds are coming up. I think we owe it to them to do that and I think the time is is going by. One of the things Mr. that was Chairman. suggested at the last well, the last board, I think it was the last meeting of the last board, mm -hmm. was that before any of these things are brought up and, and the departments are requested to do something that the owners of those properties be called in to meet with the board. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about that as well. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand this because you keep talking about private roads, but this doesn't say anything about private roads. It says, question of meeting with residents from areas where trash collection is to be stopped because of restrictions in docks and on plans. Um, so I'm not sure if I understand exactly what's happening, but in the past, if people brought their trash out to the road, they would be picked up. And there was not any problem with that in any way from the DPW or anybody else. Um, so like I'm, I want to be brought up to speed. What's happening with the trailer park down on uh, Kings Highway? I believe that that's not being collected at this point. Correct. Yeah. I have no problem if it's not on private roads, but I really don't yeah. see any, I think it's a, such a small problem. Uh, if people bring the trash out, I've heard the people from DPW say many times, it's not a problem to pick it up if it's out on the road. Uh, the going on private property, I agree. There's just, and you know, having been on the planning board for many years, um, the, when these new developments come in, they all, you know, they don't, most of the time they don't ask for it because it's not practical to bring it out to the street. Or there's 75 of them or something and they're not going to bring 75 uh, trash buckets and 75 recycling um, tubs out there. So I don't have a problem of picking up the trash if they bring it to the street. Wonderful. And just to give you some situational awareness, there's a Mr. Uh, Gunling from mm -hmm. Five Ice, Ice House Lane. Perhaps some of you have seen <coughs> this email that went right. to the former chairman. Yep. And um, he writes on uh, 20 March. I am contacting you to see if there's been any resolution or movement by the board and the town of Hampton regarding the pickup of our trash and recycling at the end of es escrow extension. To say the least, this is causing us a great deal of consternation, not to mention the inconvenience that your inequitable, quote, solution, end quote, has caused us and other residences and of what is Ice that? House Lane. Is that a, that's, so those are private homes? They're condos. Condominium. Or condo. Condominium. Oh, oh, those they're, are the little condos. Down off the end of Esker Road. Yeah. Yes. To but see, then let me just finish, just to give you more of that yeah. awareness, and then right back to you, sir. To see the Hampton trucks picking up containers less than 100 <coughs> yards away and driving within five feet of where our cans are located upsets me to no end. 
do you really want us to get our own service? If that is the case, and seeing that I've been in the waste and recycling industry since the 80s, I'd be tempted to select a hauler with the biggest, nastiest, noisiest, smokiest paper truck to service our street. And why not? The town has shown no regard for our situation, and you are not providing the basic services that are the responsibility of the community. And by denying service to me, I believe the board is acting in a discriminatory manner against an elderly, service-disabled veteran. Looking forward to response and ultimately a resolution to this ongoing issue. Sincerely, Mr. Gunling, Five Eyes Hope Slane. Back to you. Yeah, I mean, I would like to know how the other board members feel about it. I mean, what's been voted on here, uh, obviously, last year is not the way that it's always been. And I think that we really need to take a look at it. And I think that what was the uh, basic way it always was, was if the people can bring it out to their uh, corner, you know, out on the street, it would just be picked up. And they, you know, when they, especially when they come by with those trucks, it's not a problem. Yes, sir. The only problem I have is, is when these condo projects come in and they go before the planning board and they make all these agreements and they make all these... Uh, that they say, well, we'll pick <coughs> up our own trash, and if that's what they want, that's what we'll do it, so they can get their condo project in. And then all of a sudden, the poor person who buys the property mm -hmm. doesn't know anything about that. I, I feel bad for that person, but mm -hmm. you're supposed to be aware of what you buy also. Um, you know, th that's the reason why they, they started doing this. Um, there are a number of streets I know that are, are private streets, and I know there's a few up behind my house that we pick up right now. Uh, so uh, we've got to take a look at this whole thing. Oh, yes. And it, it's an issue of fairness. Um, I, I, and I said it when I was running for election, the, the Methodist Church, uh, I, they're having to put their trash out on Route 1 right now, and they, they do the uh, Meals on Wheels there. We drove around that building for years and years and years, and it's safely do it. If we can't, if if we can drive around a piece of property without having to back into a piece of property like that one, I think we need to address the issues like that too. I understand not backing into a piece of property. I understand that, but if if, if it's already been through the planning board and the agreements were made before that, I under, I can feel for these people about not picking up their trash but it's something they should have been aware of when they bought their property. Uh, so that being said, we, I think we really have to take a look at because there are a lot of private roads, yes. uh, some that are still being picked up, and we need to address that. So, Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I agree with Rusty and I agree with Rick sort of, uh, that, that, that we really need to you know, have a, know what we're talking about before we do anything. And I, and I think at this point we don't really know what we're talking about totally. Mm -hmm. And you know, is, is you know how many how many places does this affect? Does it affect more than we have here? You know, if we go here and then somebody says, well, this other one also, and you know, is it costing us more to like Rick says, if somebody brings it out to the street, does it cost more to pick those up? You know, one of the so problems I mean, I think that there's has a lot of issues there that that need to be that we need to look at, and then come up with a decision. One of the big problems that people have is that many of these condos that you see the, the buckets out there, they only want their recycling picked up because the other company won't take their recycling. So the, like for instance, the condos that are right to the south of me, the uh, big yellow ones that Negrelli built, uh, people take their recycling out there. They don't take their trash to begin with. And you know they think they're doing something for the community. I mean, they read the sign when you drive into town that says recycling is mandatory. Well, I can speak to that because the condo I live in does that. Yeah. You <laughs> that bring yours out? That they're recycling. Yeah. We do our trash in a dumpster. And that's how recycling, many of them are. And we could do our recycling in the trash, just throw it in the trash, then it wouldn't be recycled. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the majority that's of the people... That's part of this problem we're talking about. The people about. feel as if, you know, we're doing something to help the town, you know, help the environment, help yeah. the town by bringing it out there. So I think it's... A, it, it's a bigger issue than just saying this or that. Yes. Any further comment from board members? Mary Louise, you yes. look like and you. And we need to go into this in depth. But the private roads are private roads. And I, I agree with you, Rusty, to a point. But we cannot, we cannot allow town vehicles on any private property. 
And this is where we've gotten into trouble in the past. Somebody did a favor for their church, or somebody did a favor for this business, or somebody did a favor for something else. And it's, it's grown like topsy, and it's grown beyond us. Anytime we send a vehicle onto private property, whether it's backing or not, it's a danger. And many of the businesses on Route 1 have gone ahead and, and gotten their own dumpsters and gotten their own resources so they don't have to have the problem. Uh, there was a motel up there that people, the town truck was going in the back and opening the thing and emptying out their, their waste area. We can't have that. Furthermore, I'm going to suggest to you as we start getting into this, that I think we need to make a decision before the summer season comes because of the budget and because of our expenses to start restricting the number of days a week that we're picking up waste. And I'm going to start by referring to weekends where we're paying time and a half for trash pickup on weekends and double time on Sundays. And we're going to have to start restricting uh, collection as far as I would propose uh, to one day a week for the rest of the areas, for everything that is not at the beach, and just just go as well you have for the residential pickups, not two or three times a week or whatever. We're going to have to start restricting because this has grown too big and we're spending too much time on trash. You heard Fred say at the planning board meeting, uh, I heard him say, that we are fielding, fielding three men for highway, three men, three men in the summer in this town and we can't keep doing that so we're either going to have to hire more personnel and everybody's going to cringe and cry if I suggest that or we're going to have to start freeing up our crews to do highway work so that's what I have in mind okay. and I really would like this on the agenda thank you so in, in, in our comments are, 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 are mushrooming a bit past yes. this, this, this but issue. we need to talk about it come Mr. back Chairman. to Selectman Griffin please yeah, I feel that we need to, um, this is something that I'm going to bring up later, but we need to uh, go over the Warren articles that were passed and take a look at what the people voted for. Okay, thank people you. People did not vote for any number or, or frequency of collections. They only voted to continue collection. Okay, and, and, and let me just kind of um, bring, bring, bring this to a close and make a suggestion for an agenda mm -hmm. item. And, and specifically to Mr. Gunling, uh, Mr. Welch, are we picking up Ice House as we speak? I believe they're still putting their material out at the end of Escaro. Okay, because this disabled uh, elderly service veteran wanted to know the answer to the, that question, and we uh, we are picking it up, you believe, and you, you... I haven't been told it's been discontinued, but okay. it, it could very well have been because this board did, or the prior mm -hmm. board did order that, yep. and I believe that we sent a letter saying it would not be picked up, so... Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I'd have to check with the Public Works Director in the morning to see if it was picked up yesterday. I will forward so you this email. I will forward one other to you for, for response directly yeah. to, to him. Uh, there, there are good points made. One is the planning board issue and the mm -hmm. drill down on what is in concrete in terms of approvals. Some of these, and that's going forward, some of these, like this Ice House Lane, uh, when you purchase a piece of property, Rusty makes a great mm -hmm. point, caveat emptor. It's the Correct. buyer's responsibility, as painful as that may sound, to Absolutely. research and mm -hmm. do the condo docs, whether it's for insurance or trash pickup or what your rights and responsibilities are. And, and that seems to me to be uh, an effort on people purchasing around here to uh, step up. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of who we're picking up and who we're not picking up, I would like to say, with the new board, in a varying opinion, that not next week we talk about mm -hmm. this, but two weeks, Good. and I would like to hear um, who we're picking up, who we're not picking up, mm -hmm. if we may, if the board agrees, and then the legal opinion, mm -hmm. uh, and then the public works director. So we're going to be attorney yep. and, and public works two director. weeks from now. Excellent. And, and I would just say, is, is and not disagreeing with Mary Louise, but when police respond, they go on private property. When fire responds, they go on private property. Uh, folks pay taxes. The trailer park, uh, we've, we've, we've gone over these metrics, and, and, and some may assert as this elderly disabled veteran, and let me just finish, that um, that's the only service they get. And uh, it doesn't cost, um, they don't have kids in school. And this is just another way of thought, and your suggestions in, yeah. in about, about this whole matter will come to the board and we'll have a vote on it. Mm -hmm. But let's put it for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can line your ducks up what you each individual board member has for the town attorney, for Fred, and the public works director. Fair enough? 
you know, so I'll be letting people know in two weeks if they want to come and talk about this. Yes. They'll be uh, with all due respect, though, yes, sir. Mr. I mean, Chairman. Yes, ma'am. The when police and fire are invited onto a property, that's by invitation of the owner, and it's not constant. It's not something they're performing every single day of the year, and sometimes they never go on. So that's an entirely different circumstance. Yes, ma'am. I agree. Uh, uh, Mr. Griffin is talking about having the public here. Are you talking about having a public hearing or public? Uh, public interaction at this? I, I think it will be on the agenda and if, if folks want to come and want to speak, that, that, that they should Well, should what are they going to, to speak to until after we've had a chance to discuss it? I can see a subsequent meeting, but we're not going to be, if they're going to be coming and commenting before we've even beaten some of the plans into shape and gotten advice by council, wouldn't we perhaps put that off a week for the public to come and comment? Put what off for the week? The public, the g generic public comment. I don't mean somebody talking for two minutes about whatever. But if we're going to invite a large group, what of does the board think here? about next week having a public? Well, why don't they I wait to hear what we have to I say? I feel that we need to have the public speak first before we make the decision, or just let them come for their two minutes. Fred, any suggestions? Or five minutes, that or six minutes, of however they've been having. I think the question was raised uh, by the prior board that the public needs to speak on this mm -hmm. and they need to address it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, as long as it's done before you make a decision so that you have the input, I think that's what's important. Oh, okay. uh, what order it comes in, I think, is immaturial, but well, it needs to happen. Want to just come for pu public comment okay. for the most part. I mean, that works as well as anything. And the pleasure of the board would be to have that two weeks from now. Yeah. We'll pri Sounds two weeks good. from now? Okay. Good. Thank you. Moving on, old business number two, question of hydrant cost on a new subdivision, funds not in budget. And if again, Mr. Welch, can you mm -hmm. frame the Okay. Uh, the board issued an order this past year that any sums that are to be expended that are not contained within the budget were to come to the board for approval. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new, new subdivision working, which is going through the planning board and they want a hydrant on their property uh, and the question is should the town pay for it or should they? Um, in the past the town has always paid for it. They're eighteen hundred and thirty five dollars a piece. Uh, if it's a town cost, if it's a private cost, I think it's like six thousand uh, dollars because it's a private hydrant at that point in time. So the question, I brought the question to the board because of our previous order. The question is how do you want to proceed with this so we can resolve this issue with the developer? Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, this is Stowcroft, yes. Fred. Yes. Um, <coughs> for example, Schooner Landing has a private hydrant system. Would, but the hydrant I that's being addressed for Stowcroft would be on a public road. And is Schooner that correct? Landing is a private, private subdivision. Place. Street well, down. I right. Yeah. But but this Stowcroft would hydrant would be on a public road. That's correct. Right. So this would come once once installed, if it is, it would come under our hydrant rental in the operating budget. That is correct. So the only question then is who pays for the initial installation? Actually, the initial installation is free. As I understand it, the, uh, the water company installs the services for free and they bill you the cost of service. Um, and in the case of a hydrant, it's we pay an annual standby fee of eighteen hundred and thirty-five dollars. If it's a pr private hydrant, it's five or six thousand dollars. So, right. since the board's order was that I'm not allowed to expend or add anything <coughs> to the budget uh, that is al not already in the budget, mm -hmm. uh, an additional cost beyond what the town has approved, uh, this would be an additional cost beyond what the town has approved. So I brought it to the board for approval okay. or this denial. This would represent an ongoing expense once installed for the town since it would be a public hydrant on a public way, That's right. right? That's correct. Okay. I think that we should, uh, if the planning board and the fire department mandate that a hydrant be placed on a public way, then I think it should be, uh, you know, Aquarian will install. And I think the public should then take that hydrant under its wing like every other public hydrant in the community as long as it's public. I have a problem with that. I just want somebody to make the yeah. decision because I've been told I can't do it until I, I get a decision. Is uh, Mr. Waddell any comment? No, I'm thinking on it still. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, is anyone making a motion or? I will, I will so move that we direct the manager that when a 
fire hydrant is mandated by the planning board and the fire department to be placed on a public, public way, way that the ta that uh, Aquarian would be requested <coughs> to install and the town will accept that as any other hydrant under the hydrant rental section of the operating budget. On a public way, right. A second. I'll second that. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. See how easy that was, Mr. Chair? Very well done, <laughs> Vice Chair. <laughs> Old business number three, question of modifying the building department fees. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, this came up uh, on the last board uh, and we started looking into this. Uh, the suggestion was, actually this is, a, this is a sort of a double barreled situation. If we look at the costs <coughs> of operating the department less the overhead for employees, that is to say, the uh, the actual budget uh, that's in there in the department, we are making enough money to come pretty close to a zero. Mm -hmm. It just depends upon the year. But basically speaking, we're covering the cost of running the department. Uh, the issue came up as to whether or not we should include in that all of the overhead for employees, which has the effect of uh, mm -hmm. substantially increasing the amount of money in the fee base. Um, for all intents and purposes, it doubles it. And the question is that, and the board left the question on the table, whether or not we wish to change those fees. Thank you, sir. Incorporating those sums. We'll go to you first. Yeah. I think good. that it isn't, uh, I believe I read that uh, Kevin Schultz doesn't support raising the fees. Is uh, that correct? You probably not only read it, you probably heard it from your house. It's, uh, Kevin Schultz. He was a little boisterous on the issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I think that that should be, you know, Kevin needs to advise us on how, how it works in other communities. I don't see why it should be substantially different in Hampton. My understanding is he's actually surveyed the other communities around us and the overhead is not part of the cost. Mm -hmm. Selectman Wilson. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. I'll take my lead from Kevin Schultz. I mean, yeah. He's Same. the one that does that. I yeah. mean, he's the one that... Yeah. If he's done the homework on it and found out that they don't include that, we don't want to, you know, put so ourselves at that disadvantage. Either. So Ke Kevin will, will, will brief us through you or by some means and, and let us know his position on this. And if, if, if there is a delta or a change, then uh, we, will, uh, we will address it. Thank you, Thank you sir. Uh, number four, old business. Selectman's request to the board, MLW, ah. Selectman Wilson. Well, I'd like to see some items put on in st staggered fashion uh, on the uh, agendas, as I mentioned in my um, email to you. Um, the reconsideration of the frequency of waste pickup, uh, I would like to see when, when Keith is in for his monthly meeting. And my other concern, which I uh, directed to Fred immediately after the election, of course, is the sewer buy-in fee. Uh, I understand that the Public Works Department has, uh, has or is in the process of hiring engineers to calculate that, but, but my concern is that if we let too much time go by, we're going to be missing the opportunity to assess this. Fred was talking about revenue, and I'm uh, keen on revenue this year. Uh, I would like to see if we can legally, before we are able to get the, the uh, calculations in a row, uh, assess an estimated sewer buy-in charge. Uh, the sewer <coughs> buy-in uh, comes under the statutes of the state of New Hampshire. There are formulas. And I would like to be able to put forth an estimated buy-in charge. For example, Dover charges something like 1500 and change per bedroom unit. The calculations are per bedroom unit. And for commercial, the calculation is predicated on how many thousands or hundreds of gallons of water divided by 150 uh, for your establishment. I do not want to see buildings, more buildings built or additions put on private homes, et cetera, without assessing this buy-in fee. Once the buildings are constructed, of course, then they're going to be put on the tax rolls, like everybody else's property, like mine and yours. But I would like to see if we can do an estimated buy-in fee and then st clearly stipulate to the contractors or whoever's doing the building 
that if that fee is overstated, that we would refund once the correct calculations are made by the engineers. And if the fee is understated, then we would send a supplemental billing to collect the balance due. I think it's critical because the town did authorize 149I and we now have the authority for levying. And I want to see that put into, uh, put into play as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Um, I feel that uh, it's not fair. I understand some of the things that are being said here, but I'm sure that Rusty and Jim don't understand them. And before anything is going to be done, there needs to be a presentation to this board by so that by so that we are given some advice and some explanation about this. I've heard it before, but I, I assume that these guys haven't. And we can't be just going on what happened with the last board without this board being advised. We talked about this last year. This was openly discussed. We discussed it at the deliberative session. And I think it has at least been somewhat aired out in public. Well, before you, this board can make a decision, I think we I'm need to be advised. I'm not saying you're going to make a decision tonight, but we I'm need to get it I'm not saying tonight either, because the, there's no one here to advise us. We need us. to get it on the table, get it on the agenda, so that we have Mark here and Keith and Fred and start figuring out how we can do this. Thank you. I, I understand what Mary Louise is saying, but I, I, we do have to get it on board and get something done with it. But we do need to get some more information on it, especially for yeah. Jim and I. I. I've heard, obviously, I've listened to what's going on in the past. However, I want to hear yeah. any information there is. But sooner rather than later, because That's the clock is going. That's fine, buddy. Thank me. you, sir. Second. Yeah, I'd like information prior to, but get it on the board, get it mm -hmm. operating, get it going, and get some information. Wonderful, thank you. And the and the uh, the email Mary Louise is referring yeah. to is one that she sent to me and. Uh, doing uh, her, her great diligent work that she does for the board and for the town. There were three items. Uh, one was uh, this, this 324 discussion of guidance to the planning board. Uh, there were some issues for the chief silver and there were some uh, seven or eight issues for uh, the uh, public works director. Mm -hmm. And naturally as board members when these department heads are coming in mm -hmm. you can uh, do, do this kind of stuff. Feel free to um, uh, send these email requests for information so they can be prepared to answer your questions when they do appear and copy the town manager. Well, what I'm doing is sending the email requests to you and the manager and then you as the chairman can divvy them up so when Chief Silver comes in we need more information on the fire inspector and the costs Okay. obviously and then in, with the 149i I would suggest that it would be smart the next time Keith comes in for his regular appointment to clear the agenda because we have a lot to discuss with the okay. public works I, I, I don't know if that's going to be possible, but I, I, I don't want anyone to think that they can't. Um, they have to run agenda items or requests for information f via email through me. That's to one of the heads. joys but of I, the chair. I, and I'm happy to get that. I would love to be copied on it. But and, and thank you for copying me. But I just wanted to um, show the, the the breadth and depth of your work and your diligence. I'm not going to have someone arresting me under 91A for doing dreadful <laughs> things. So I'm putting the burden on the chairman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the burden. Um, Mr. Welch, any final comments on those issues? Uh, I know that Keith is working diligently to uh, bring in a written proposal for you on uh, those costs. Mm -hmm. so that you'll know how to formulate it, what needs to happen, how it goes together, mm -hmm. what decisions you need to make in order to move it forward if, in fact, you decide you wish to move it forward. So it's, it's quite an involved process. Uh, the people who do it, are located in Pennsylvania. Uh, we have talked to two or three consulting engineering companies in New Hampshire and they've all recommended one group mm -hmm. as the national concern that does <coughs> this for everyone. So he's preparing that information to be brought into you, to be presented to you because you need to hear it. You need to understand what it is. And I have the copy of the Dover situation that I'll bring into Fred. We'll make copies of that and see to it that each of you have a copy of what the city of Dover does. Wonderful. Thank you. Any other old business gentlemen, lady? Seeing none, Roman 7, new business number one, selectman representative to the planning board, member and alternate member. Pleasure of the board, please. Make a motion to uh, nominate Rick Griffin. For? The planning board member. Is there a second? I'll second that. 
Second, any discussion? All those in favor? That's three. I'm employees. abstaining. And two abstentions. Selectman Griffin is the member of the planning board. Uh, a motion for the alternate, please. I would nominate Rusty Bridle. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second. All those in favor? Rusty? That's four and one abstention from the chair in favor. New business. Selectman representative to boards, commissions, and committees. Are we ready for our assignments? Um, oh, yeah, before you do, Mr. Chairman, if there's some of these committees should be sunsetted. Committees shouldn't drag on forever. They should be at the convenience of whatever board has appointed them, and I think sometimes they, uh, they just last too long. So I think we ought to look at sunsetting some of these. Would, would, would Why do you don't we make that a discussion? Would, would, you, would you like to put that on the agenda for next week? Okay. Is, is but if fair? we're going to appoint members to these committees now, why would we do that? Uh, how about you go down the list, or let's go down the list, and who um, is contemplating a sunset, and we can postpone memberships to that. Is well, that fair? Well, for whatever okay. the board's pleasure is, please. That's okay. okay. Why don't we each suggest which ones we think should be sunsetted? All right. And Selectman Wilson? I think the Recycling Committee, it's time to, res to sunset that committee. Okay. And these would all be effective, if I recall correctly, on March 31st. I do think it's time to sunset the committee. Actually, We're just so the board knows, all the committee appointments of that committee have expired. Yes. It's good, good talk. So. And that would take out the alternate as well. Okay. Other committees or commissions? I don't know about the Energy Committee. I know Dick DeRosier has done a wonderful job on that, but do you think we're... Uh, we're still working with still that. Still working with that? Trying to get that? gas involved with uh, mm -hmm. bringing that online. Okay. And the Heritage Commission is pretty much a done deal with the warrant going on. No one the wants to... The did vote to place a warrant article yep. to eliminate the Heritage Commission. Yeah. And the Records Advisory Committee, Fred, how is that functioning at the moment? Um, that they only meet upon demand, but they are statutory. Okay. And the CIP? CIP is statutory. Okay. Cable is self-explanatory, and Rec and Parks is, so I don't have a problem with either of those. Okay. So uh, the Heritage Commission and the Recycling, is that my mm -hmm. understanding? Yeah, yeah. and, and I think, do we have a consensus of that? It seems like it. Yeah, I agree. Thanks. Okay. Before we get to the rest of these, yes, sir. Um, <laughs> after after our last meeting in in the budget committee, uh, and then looking at what I'm my my duties are with the school board too, uh, it's going to be where we both have have a tendency to meet on Tuesday nights. Um, I would like to uh, step down from from the budget committee. Is there a motion? Uh, do we need to accept your motion, or w how does that work, Fred? Please. I think I think we should make them stay. That would be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make the I'm going to make the motion. We have Jim as the budget committee to replace you to replace me. Second. Any discussion? Jim, you game. Fine. All those in favor? And do we have an alternate for that? Yes, it's Mary Louise. Okay, thank you, Mary Louise. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, it so is. I would. Yes, sir. I, I would like to just like ask about a few of these. Okay. Um, uh, one, one of the representatives that are listed here <coughs> never was for you know all of the years I was here. It was only because we were building the fire station did we have a representative to the Hampton Beach Village District. So oh, I when we made oh. Uh, you know, the board have a representative. That's it a was yeah. because of the fire station. That's a good point. I really don't think that it's necessary. I pretty much go to the meetings anyway, but not always, and I, I didn't go as much in the last year. Um, but it never was one that we had mm -hmm. until the fire station really got going, and that's how we did it. Good point. So, uh, my, my, if there's a consensus that uh, there, there, there may very well be a presence by a board yeah. member, but we're not going to appoint yeah. tonight. We get, I mean, there may be times when there's a problem, and then we ha need to make sure that someone's down okay, there. Yeah. And we also get their minutes. Yeah. So and the Chamber of Commerce, likewise, I don't see the well, necessity for appointing someone to. 
I don't think it's appropriate, actually, well, if they're a private organization. I disagree with that. Well, I would okay. like um, to make a motion that we have someone at the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. That's a motion. Is there a second? Does there need to be a motion? I think unless, it's unless there. we have a consensus, we already have it there. Yeah, we've all, we've, so. Last year was the first year that there wasn't one, and I'd be glad to do it. I'm not a member of the Chamber of Commerce either, I may add. I don't think it's appropriate for a board of elected officials to send something someone as that's a always been done. The except for okay, last is there a yeah, motion been done. for uh, Mr. Griffin to be a representative to the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce? I'm fine with that. Okay, is there a second? A second. Seconded by Mr. Waddell. All those in favor? Four. One opposed. Okay. What's this representative for assessing? An alternate representative to the Hampton? Do we no. need an alternate? I don't think okay, so. Okay, no Walsh. Well, the representative for assessing, Mr. Chairman, where did that come from? Mr. Welch, may you shed some light on this, please? Um, the assessing department comes under the Board of Selectmen, and <laughs> I believe two years ago, maybe it was three, I'm not sure, uh, the chairman was directed to be the representative representing the board to that department, since I don't oversee it. I think that's one we could sunset myself. The same with, um, and, and that's not statutory. No, no, no. Okay, uh, a consensus is that we won't. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct. All right. Are we, are we ready to go to Parks and Rec? We go to something <laughs> um, left. Fun and games. Yeah. Well, it's winnowed down, which is good. Uh, representative to the Recreation and Parks, Recreation and Parks Committee, please. Wind up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Jim, we don't, we're, we're going to dispose of the motions. I'll second. All right. Yeah. Great. Um, an alternate? I don't know that we'd need to, an I'll alternate. I'll do the alternate in case. I mean, I, yeah. I go to some of their Good. meetings anyway, so. All right. Good. Uh, cable TV. You know, I'd like to do that, too. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> Welcome home. You're going to put big. A yeah. couple months from now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, it, that's it. I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd like to be the alternate as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, representative to the CIP. Mary, well, who's Mary the alternate to the cable TV? No, we shouldn't need we an don't alternate. To no, that. I think we're going to be I good. agree. Okay. If yeah. they don't, sh yeah, yeah. alternate okay. stuff is over. Representative to the uh, capital improvements. CIP. I'll, CIP. I'll nominate Mary Louise. Are we willing? That's something you want to do. I with. don't care one way or the other. They don't like me. I keep yelling at them for <laughs> having such low figures. <laughs> <laughs> MLW um, and an alternate. No. Okay. A representative to the Records Advisory Committee. Okay, I'll take that one. <laughs> and we won't need a. Um, yeah. An alternate. Not this year. Yeah. And uh, a representative to the Heritage Commission. No, no. Remember. No. That's right. That's right. Heritage is off. Yeah. Energy Commission. Energy Commission, please. Um, Jim, do you want to do that? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I'll, I'll do, I'll, that's a great committee in, in Dick they and are, uh, Richard do great, great, great work. Yep, I'll do yep. that. We don't need an alternative. You don't want an alternative. I mean, you're done. All right. Uh, it's fine. Okay, we're done. Sometimes they need people there to vote and stuff mm -hmm. yeah. in case there is, but you'll probably always be there. Wonderful. Any new business? Uh, okay. Uh, Roman 8, consent agenda. Or um, wait a minute. I, I'm I sorry. guess I did want. Yes, sir. I forgot we were. Uh, I wanted to know when we're going to discuss about the uh, me the uh, calendar of meetings. Okay. We last last year we met every week except for legal holidays. Mm -hmm. I would like to see us go to the way that it always was, which was every other week during the summer. Okay. Is the board prepared to discuss this this week, or do you want to discuss it next week? I think we need a little time to I think. We need to discuss but I will. I. I mean, not. Yeah. A little time to discuss. I will say it, I don't want to hear as it always was because I served on this com this board since 1978, off and on. People get mad at me, they throw me out, and here I am again. But uh, uh, I think time is so short. Jim is going to feel this. Time is so short. We're sitting here now, and before you know it, it's going to be next year at this time. There is no time to waste, and there's a huge amount that we need to tackle this year. So I will, vis I will vigorously object to changing that. Okay. We need to meet. And, and, and 
just for uh, a, a matter of board cohesion and uh, a, a little, a little, an uh, uh, I a love little that. Uh, contemplating the issue. Can we put that on yes. for an agenda item and yes. come to uh, prepared to make a decision not only in the summer but in, around the holidays right. and yeah. just how? Uh, yeah, I was right. just going to say, is something else we might want to look at. That is, I know again, calling on my state house stuff. You know, they actually have a couple of vacations or a couple of breaks that are set up well in advance with one week here or one week there and if if we can know that that's why that, that's what that, that might that's be. why they're all messed up in concrete <laughs> no, but, I'm, but I'm telling you unless you're prepared to sit here and work and I oh, didn't I run for this to warm the chair unless you're prepared to sit here and work and get <coughs> through everything that needs to be done summer winter spring or fall this town goes on and we need to work. I don't disagree I with I would that. like to speak. Okay. Uh, first of all, we always, uh, Mr. Welsh always does bring the whole year calendar in so that we know in advance, right? Yes. That's right, the way it's right always been. Right now it's been. every week. Yeah. Thank but you. I mean, yeah. Um, what I'm, from everyone that I've checked, it really wasn't necessary last year. You're that's the only one that I've heard different that says that's that. That's ridiculous. So that's great. You know, and that's your opinion. Well, the opinion, board held so to that schedule, didn't they? We met well, every week. In the past, what has happened, which worked very well, if we had any need to have special meetings at any time, we and any of the, t the two times that I was chairman, we always had it, including during the week if we needed, you know, if we needed another meeting besides Monday night, of course we're going to have it if there's something to discuss or something that's, that is necessary. But I think that we do need to discuss I, I, about I think, the every I think, other week. I think we've got a consensus that it will be on next week's agenda. We're not just looking at summer schedule. We're also looking at, say, perhaps um, the uh, Thanksgiving Day week, perhaps Christmas week, uh, significant religious holidays. We can uh, expand the debate to, to include that so everyone's satisfied. Someone will make a motion. Not all of us will be happy. And it all depends on which days they fall on, too, as far as Mondays are concerned. Exactly. Any further new business? this evening. Thank you. <coughs> on Roman 8 consent agenda. I'll uh, so move, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Second. Second. Uh, and does anybody feel a need to read the entire Hope consent agenda? Yeah. I had a request from people that it, they felt it's necessary. I'll okay. Just Wonderful. I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will read the, uh, the salience and um, could I ask uh, going forward, Mr. Welsh, that this uh, consent agenda, when it's this detailed and enumerated, that it goes on the website? Sure. If people have an information request. I, I believe this. It is? Okay, uh, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, number one is a new veteran tax credit, and there's uh, um, several under that. There's number two, requalifying veterans tax credit. There's uh, uh, a half dozen or so of those. Number three, there's requalifying elderly tax exemption. There's a half dozen of those, or four or five. Number four, there's new elderly tax exemption. There's one of those. Number five, there's release of a welfare lien. Number six, conservation commission appointments. Uh, there's four members that have gone on for that. And that is the consent agenda. It's been so moved. Is there a second? Yes. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Closing comments. Work, work, work. Mary Louise, is there a motion? Oh, I emotion. will so move to adjourn <laughs> <laughs> at 8.58 p.m. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Well done.